Hello, hope you're doing well. Welcome to another sketchbook session. This is the chilled out series where I draw stuff with a bit more of a casual format than my usual speed paint content. For today's installment, I wanted to invite you guys along to join me while I do a couple of practice sketches of various kinds of hands. Hands are a particular part of character anatomy that a lot of people find tricky, myself included. So while this isn't a full tutorial or anything, because I am in no way qualified to educate considering the fact that my artistic understanding of anatomy consists solely of faking it till I make it, I thought it would at least be interesting to try and share a couple of tips and tricks that I use personally and that have helped me in my own learning. So yeah, disclaimer before we get into the meat of this video, this is not a tutorial in the traditional sense. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to make a step-by-step, -step, here's how to draw whatever kind of tutorial, because I don't know, breaking down my process into something so rigid like that sounds like the kind of thing that would be painfully dull both to make and to watch. Um, <laughs> I just thought that this might be a fun way of sharing what I hope will be a few bits of helpful advice with you guys that you can then take away with you and try to apply to your own styles, rather than just copying mine step by step. Because again, I don't think that that kind of step by step stuff is a whole lot of fun in the first place. So, for this hand practice, I started out by doodling a page full of hands in various positions, without using any reference. For the record, going forward, all of the hands that you're going to see being drawn in this video are colour-coded. If they're red, it means that they were drawn just from my imagination without reference, and if they're blue, it means that they were drawn using reference. Although, I think the difference is probably going to be pretty evident even without the colour-coding. The reason that I started out by drawing a batch of hands like this, without any reference, was partly to warm up, and partly so that I would have something to compare to later when I actually did get round to using references. Now obviously I draw professionally, this is my job, and I've therefore drawn many many hands in my time. Which means that I'm pretty familiar with the general process of making hands happen. So a lot of the time, as you'll see here, I just kind of go straight in without doing too much shape work on the initial sketch which, as you'll also see in a minute, isn't necessarily the best habit. But one tip that I can give right off the bat because of that habit is that generally I find it way easier to start by defining the butt of the hand. It's a fun name, I know, but basically the area where the lower half of the palm and the thumb make a little butt shape, just above the wrist. I couldn't tell you why, but it serves as a pretty good starting point to help build up the rest of the shapes you need to make a hand. I will also say that something I realised while doing this practice was that I find it a lot easier to draw hands when they are actually attached to a body. Um, <laughs> it was really hard doing these initial doodles because normally a lot of the flow and readability of individual body parts, like hands, comes from the way that they're incorporated into the overall anatomy and the pose that you're trying to draw as a whole. It can certainly be helpful to practice difficult anatomy this way, by drawing a bunch of parts floating in space. I mean, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't recommend it, um, but I would also recommend not having that be your main way of practicing, because if you only ever practice drawing the different pieces of the body individually like this, you're going to have a really tough time proportioning everything properly when you put it all together. As always, I can only advise based on my own experience, but in my experience, the best way to learn and develop your methods of anatomy is just to draw a whole lot of full bodies and make a whole lot of mistakes, rather than just trying to perfect one piece of human anatomy at a time. Bearing that in mind, I think I'll get back to talking about how to perfect one specific piece of anatomy, shall I? <laughs> so after doing that page of freehand imagination-only sketches, I hopped onto Google Images and searched for various photo references to paste into my drawing software. And this is where my main bit of advice for this video is going to come into play. I've mentioned before in previous sketchbook sessions how a lot of people who are learning how to draw can get stuck on the idea that using references is cheating somehow. As if using any kind of reference will make the art police come busting into your room to tell you that you're under arrest for unforgivable art crimes. Um, <laughs> I've also mentioned in videos before that that is obviously not the case. References are vital for learning how to draw things accurately, that's why artist mannequins exist, that's why people go to life drawing classes, and that's why there are countless pages online dedicated to compiling photo references that are made specifically for artists to use in order to help inform their work. And one of the techniques that I found personally to be the most helpful, the most educational when it comes to using those kind of references, is tracing. Now I know that that definitely sounds like cheating, and that's because it can be, but stay with me here. You see, tracing is a two-sided coin. It can either be used for evil, in the instance of people tracing somebody else's work and pretending it's theirs, which is supremely uncool, only villains do that. Alternatively though, tracing can be used for good. 
specifically in the way that I'm using it here, which is to say using tracing only as a tool for practice and comprehension. References should typically only be used to inform your own work, so what I tend to do is draw on top of a reference in order to break it down into understandable pieces and familiarize myself with the shapes that it's made of, as well as get used to the kind of hand motions that are used to draw them. On screen right now, you'll be able to see the exact kind of process that I use for this kind of tracing-based practice. As I said before, to start off, I'll find a reference image and import it into my drawing software. Then I lower its opacity, and on a new layer, I just kind of sketch on top of it. The key thing though is that rather than just tracing the outline, which generally teaches you nothing, I'll try to visualize it as a bunch of shapes and curves. That way it's really easy to recreate whatever I'm trying to learn when drawing freehand, because I'll have that understanding of what pieces it's made of. So again, you'll be able to see it on screen here, but the basic learning process is pretty much paste, trace, recreate. And do not forget that last step, recreating it is the most important part, you cannot just pass the tracing off as yours, that's bad. With powerful learning tools comes great responsibility, please use tracing responsibly. And of course, um, I'm doing this digitally, but this can also absolutely be done if you don't have digital drawing software. In fact, the reason that I first started adapting this method of practice in the first place was because when I was a kid, I didn't use digital drawing software at all. Uh, but we also didn't have a printer, so my solution was that whenever I wanted to save a cool picture to use as a reference image, I would hold paper over my computer screen and trace it in pencil. Then I'd ink it separately, because I didn't want ink to bleed through the paper onto the screen. And I kept doing that for years and years, and over time it ended up becoming not only a reasonably effective way of stockpiling reference images, but also developed into a really helpful tool for breaking down images and broadening my understanding of how to put together certain poses and angles. To this day, we still don't have a printer, so I will still do that sometimes. Just put paper on my screen and copy a reference down by hand to familiarize myself with how it should be put together. I literally have an entire folder under my desk that is already crammed full with sheets of paper that I've traced onto over the years, but that I'm likely going to keep trying to add more stuff to forever. When I was younger, I always thought I was one of the only people who did this, kind of like tracing to practice sort of thing and indeed it was hard not to feel like I was kind of cheating the system somehow. But over the years, I found that this method of practice via tracing is actually really, really common. Tons of people find it really helpful. So uh, actually, this might be old news to some of you if you've heard of it before, but if you haven't heard of it, then hopefully this is at least a bit of a helpful revelation. And hopefully in either case, you can take this as a reminder that it's definitely not the kind of practice that you should feel guilty about or that should make you feel like you're cheating in any way. It's just a legitimately helpful technique that again, a ton of people use to help break down shapes so that they can apply them to their own work. So yeah, like I said, the method for this is paste, trace, recreate. With that in mind, I want to point out some of the key bits and pieces that I try to look out for when tracing hands in particular so that I can apply them more easily to my own drawings. Like I said earlier, I tend to start at the butt of the hand, but spreading out from there, it's helpful to break the hand down into sections of palm, thumb, and fingers. Sometimes it can help to draw it like a mitten before separating it into individual digits. Again, it's all about breaking it down to the most understandable shapes that you can. The other key thing that I try to look out for is the flow of the fingers. Now, it's kind of hard for me to explain exactly what I mean by that, so it's probably a good idea to try and watch this video over and see how I apply it throughout all of these drawings if you want to understand it. But essentially, to figure out how the fingers should be arranged depending on the pose of the hand, I'll try to draw curved lines spreading out from the palm, one joining up the knuckles and one connecting the fingertips. It's not an exact science by any means, so there's not really a universal metric for where that curve is going to fall, but by seeing how that flow, that curvature, applies on my references, it helps me to figure out how to apply that kind of curve to my own freehand drawings to make all of the fingers align properly. Again, it's not an exact science, but one thing I found is that the curve that the first knuckles tend to follow will often run kind of parallel to the curvature of the top of the palm. It takes a lot of figuring out to make all of these sort of unwritten rules of hand drawing into something that comes second nature, but experimentation is half the fun. And as always, I am an advocate for variety, so trying out as many different poses and references as possible, rather than just practicing the same one over and over, is definitely the way to go. Having said that, it's also important to remember that as helpful as it absolutely is to use references like this, please don't feel like you have to do so every single time that you draw a hand or anything else. 
It's definitely helpful, but as long as you understand the kind of shapes that you should be working with, which is exactly what this kind of practice should help you learn, you'll be able to draw a hand that looks like a hand at the end of the day, and that's good enough. Personally, I would normally only use this much reference for like way more detailed painting work where I want everything to look a bit more realistic, or when I'm trying to refresh my technique with a batch of sketching practice like this. For the most part, drawings like the initial ones I did at the start of this video will pass just fine. Accuracy is not everything, uh, like I said at the beginning, fake it till you make it. Speaking of those initial drawings anyway, uh, I think I'm just about done talking here, so let's bring them back up and do a final comparison. These are the hands that I drew without any reference. They're a little bit janky, that's for sure, but they do get the job done. And these are the hands that I drew after using references to break down the shapes. As I was working on them, I honestly didn't think they were going to turn out that different, but it is quite striking to see them side by side like this. It certainly goes to show how helpful it can be to use references every now and then. Like I said though, if you want to try and use these techniques yourself, please use them responsibly. <laughs> Anyway, for now, thank you very much for tuning into this video. I hope it was helpful in any small way. I hope you're staying safe, happy, and healthy as best you can. And I sincerely hope that you'll join me again next time.